Okay, so we've set up our MySQL database and now we're ready to actually download Moodle and install it onto our server. And there's a couple of ways you can go about doing it. You could go in via the command line SSH and you can use a command called wget and install it that way. Webmin is very nice in that. We don't have to go about going back as much to the command line. We can actually now use the interface built into this to download the file locally to our machine and then upload it to our server. Uh, for some people that's a little bit easier. For some of the, those of you who want to use the command line features to download and install, you can do that as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to go here and click Others. And we're going to go to Upload and Download. And as you can see on here, we could, if we wanted to, download the files directly from the server or we can upload files from the server or upload to the server, I'm sorry, or you could download files uh, from the server to your local machine. And what we're going to do is we're going to upload, we're going to pick which directory it's going to go to, whether it's uh, who it's owned by, and if it's owned by a group, and then we're going to extract that file to our server and then delete it. So what we're going to do, we're going to go to the Moodle website. And the Moodle website, it's, it's moodle.org, or you can go to www.moodle.org. On the left-hand side here, you see it says download Moodle. Scroll down for the various different packages. And you can see that they have stable builds, they have latest releases, they have they do a build daily sometimes, meaning they've added a couple of bug fixes as they go. It's not necessarily a major release, but it's a minor release. Uh, I recommend going with just the latest stable build. The latest release uh, may or may not uh, have all, all the bugs fixed out, but at least this one is, as they say here, stable. So go ahead and use that. We've got a couple formats we can download it in. If you're a strict Linux user, uh, you can use the .tgz, or if you want to uh, more comfortable with zip files, you can get it in a zip format. It's a little bit bigger, as you can see here, 11 and a half meg versus 9.7. I'm going to download the zip version. Going to start downloading as you can see here and again if you care to do this via command line you could cancel this out and actually go here and see where it says click here to download manually you could actually control click on there copy the location and then do the wget command and actually install it that way uh, but in this case I'm just going to save this to disk And over here we see that that file is now is now downloaded. It's over here. So I'm going to minimize this out of here. I'm going to go back to our Webmin interface. Again, we're in the upload and download section, which can be found over here. I'm going to browse for that zip file, select it. Now, own by user. There are a number of users that you can use. I don't recommend that you select root. What I do select is www-data, that is the web browser. That's actually Apache is going to control this, not the root. So we're going to have the user and group be Apache to control Moodle. We want to extract the zip and tar files. Yes. Oh, and we need to select where we're going to put this. The web browser files are stored down here, at the very bottom, under var. And if you double click there. And in 
www. We're going to put it right here. Now there's already a default folder here on the server and if you go to that folder it will give you a default Apache installation screen. Um, later we can delete that if we want to but for now we're just going to drop this Moodle directory under var slash www right here. Okay, so I'll hit OK and I'm going to upload. And as you can see, the progress bar, of course, fills as we go. And again, depending on what network you're working on, if you're on a school network or if you're on an intranetwork, this should only take a couple of seconds. I'm tonight doing this from my home, and uh, it's taking a little bit longer. And as you may notice, up there I have a 209.175.18.13 address. That is, in fact, the public IP. I do have Webmin open. Um, I don't recommend that you do this. As soon as I'm done with this, I'm going to close down that port so that uh, uh, nobody can uh, potentially hack into my system. Again, I do not recommend using Webmin outside of your network unless you have a VPN connection set up or you have some sort of a, uh, uh, or you're using it on an intranet basis. Like we're about three quarters of the way done now. While we're waiting, you may notice that down here you can also get into SSH via Webmin if you wanted to. So you do not necessarily have to install another terminal program or use another terminal program if you do not wish. We'll use Java to create the SSH window. So you do need to have an updated version of Java in order to use it. Almost done here. Hopefully you've skipped past this in the video if you're watching this on YouTube or in a browser off of my site. Okay, and it says uh, failed to write, bad file descriptor. Well, normally that should not happen. What we can do, however, is let's try and upload it to our download directory. We'll leave it as root there. We'll leave it owned by group as defaults and we'll upload and hopefully then we'll get a successful upload of the file and from there we will stop with this video.